Well, little by little, the Western historians are starting to come to grips with the reality of the 1953 coup staged by the British intelligence agency MI6 and the American CIA against the democratically elected Mossadegh government in Iran. There's been uh, a few a few new revelations recently. There's a film that came out last August called Coup 53, and the director, uh, Tari Amirani, discovered that there had been censorship uh, back in the 1980s and 90s as the uh, Guardian and the Observer had censored out some some of the most interesting information about this 1953 coup, including direct proof that the uh, British agent uh, Norman Derbyshire, uh, he, he went ahead and confessed that he had spent a tremendous amount of money to overthrow the government of Iran, and he was told that he could have as much money as he needed to overthrow that government through legal or quasi-legal means. And this was all censored out of the reports in the Western media, including The Guardian, uh, decades ago. And now it's been rediscovered. And The Guardian now is admitting that, in fact, the British were uh, orchestrating this uprising, including paying for kidnapping, torturing, and uh, fake protesters flooding the streets of Tehran. And we already knew some of this, in fact, quite a lot of it. Um, it's been revealed by, uh, by many other researchers. Uh, there's, there's a book out there called The Coup by Ervend Abrahamian, which is pretty good, that shows how all of this criminality uh, was, was used to overthrow the democratically elected government of Mossadegh purely because the British uh, saw democracy in Iran as a threat to their oil monopoly there. And uh, we, we learned in the book The Coup that uh, the gangsters of South Tehran and the two leading gangsters were nicknamed uh, Icy Ramadan and Brainless Shaban. And uh, these thugs were paid vast amounts of money by the U.S. and British intelligence agencies to organize fake protests, to pay gangsters and mobsters to come out into the streets and uh, raise hell, commit violence and terrorize people and give the impression that there was some sort of uprising. And then this was cover for the actual coup d'etat, which was running on these uh, vast piles of money uh, being spent by the intelligence agencies. So what can we learn from these new re revelations? Well, we can look at the uh, fake protests in Iran that are still being orchestrated uh, by the same kinds of people. The American intelligence agencies in cahoots with the Shah's friends in Los Angeles and the other Iranian gusanos or worms, that's what the Cubans call people like that, who uh, fled the revolution with their money and settled in comfortable houses next to the Zionist community in Los Angeles, teamed up with that Zionist community and took lots of U.S. taxpayer money to uh, try to overthrow the Islamic Republic, the current democratic system in Iran, in order to reinstall uh, a puppet dictator, maybe the Shah's grandson or whoever. And, and this is still going on. And so we still have the equivalence of Icy Ramadan and brainless Shaban uh, in Iran, uh, you know, gangsters taking Western intelligence money to try to overthrow their own country. Uh, these people, of course, are tra traitors. And uh, we can also see how the fact that those agencies have unlimited money because they work for the international banking cabal that creates all Western currency out of nothing by lending it into existence at interest and then taking back that money, uh, re recouping the loan plus the exponentially increasing compound interest. So the banking cabal that owns the Western intelligence agencies literally creates the entire money supply out of nothing and cre can create as much as they want for any purpose they want. So they have unlimited money to try to subvert countries like Iran and any other country that tries to be independent and stand up for the best interests of its own people. So that's essentially what's going on in the region today and in much of the world as this banking cartel seeks to take over the entire world using these kinds of criminal means. And when will it stop? Well, maybe not only when people in Iran stand up against it, as they have, but 
when people in the West realize that this criminal banking cartel doesn't have their best interests at heart either, is exacting a 33% usury tax on every good and service that passes through their hands, when people realize that they are being bled dry by this parasitical uh, bankster uh, criminal organization, then we will have our equivalent of the 1979 Iranian Revolution, overthrow the bankster dictatorship, and get a, a genuinely democratic system here in the West.